Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is still Wednesday. I'm sorry, Thursday. I'm getting a day behind. And it's 4.58 p.m. Okay, I was reading some email, and I came across Dawn's letter. Um, and the very first one struck me that it doesn't, it's not going to pertain to everybody, but it probably is going to pertain to a few. And you need to hear this. Because the enemy just loves to lie to you. And you have to be able to distinguish his lies from when God is telling you something versus when you're just thinking something. That can be hard sometimes. But let me go ahead and read this short word that was given to Marsha Burns. Refuse to believe the enemy's lies that I do not care about you and have forsaken you. I love you with a love that goes beyond natural understanding. And I will give you the strength and determination to get through this difficult time. I am with you. And the verse she puts with it is 1 Samuel 12, 22. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Now, of course, that was written in the Old Testament, and at the time, it originally was for the Jewish people, the Hebrews. Okay, they weren't Jewish back then. Jew became short for Judeans and so on because there were 12 tribes, 12 parcels of land divided up between the 12 sons of Israel. So it was all of it was Israel, but then it divided and it became Israel and Judah. Anyway, um... Sometimes I say Jewish and I mean Hebrew. Uh, I try to remember to call them Hebrews or the Israelites. So anyway, if this pertains to you, then I pray that it will. you will be encouraged today to know that God and His Son Jesus Christ and their Holy Spirit, they love you. Things may not seem to be going your way. Let me tell you something. When Buddy died, I had a few moments there where I was like, Why? Why would you give this beautiful dog to me to be my companion animal? Only to let him die of cancer. And I was so sad and I was mad. Not for long. But I kind of felt that way. Like... I'll show now not only do you not give me messages anymore now you let my dog die and I mean I could have wrote a cry in your beer song seriously we all go through things at times and we don't always understand it because life is so imperfect and we got to remember who's really the ruler of this world and he'll do anything to take your faith away he will do anything he can. He will lie to you, steal from you, steal, kill, and destroy, hoping you'll give up on God. So don't you do it, because that's what the devil wants. Our Lord loves us, no matter what we do wrong, even if we get mad at him, and we shouldn't, because he's done so much. His love is so abundant that we don't even have the English vocabulary to completely describe how God loves us and His Son, Jesus. You know, that scripture that everybody knows, if you're a Christian, the first one they get you to memorize, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son 
so that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have life everlasting but the, really it should read should not perish in the King James but all the rest of them change it to uh, will not perish but have life everlasting it does come with a condition we have to commit to Jesus I've preached that a lot you I think most all of you know and understand there is somewhat of a burden to serving the Lord that's why he said come unto me all of you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke and learn of me for my for I am meek and humble and let's see for I am meek and humble and I will give you rest I, I think I'm missing a part but that's the gist of it there is a yoke which indicates a type of a burden let's let's face it when you share the gospel with some friends and they just say man you're so crazy i can't believe you're falling for that now doesn't that kind of hurt but you know you can't quit on account of that you can't listen to man you have to keep listening to the word to god to jesus to the holy spirit and stay on the straight and narrow. We can't let friends or relatives make us quit believing. How many of us have lost our relatives in a manner of speaking? They don't want a whole lot to do with us because we make them feel guilty. We tell them the truth. We tell them the end is near. That Jesus is coming for those who will believe. And they think, well, I believe I'm ready. I, I know I'm going. I'm a good person. I believe in Jesus as my Savior. But they don't get it because they've been in churches where they haven't been taught the whole story. That you have to repent and all that stuff. It isn't once saved, always saved. Jesus made that abundantly clear that we must ask for forgiveness of our sins and try to live a holy and righteous life. Oh, I didn't even mean to get off on that. I thought I'd read this and end it. But apparently, Jesus had other things in mind. Somebody needed to hear that. But I, it's just, I've got such a burden on my heart for people to be ready. And I just want us all to, to be to be. I want that big hug fest, you know. I want everybody that I've come to know, even though I don't know your faces, I don't know your ages, I don't know where you live. I love you. If you comment any at all and I get to know you even a little, and you choose to watch my videos and any at all, it's like we're part of a, a family, within a family. If, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, y'all are my YouTube family. And I love you. And I want everybody to be ready and to make it the first round. But if you don't, do not give up. Do not despair. Do not take that vaccine and the digital ID that comes with it. Whether it's a tattoo or whatever. Don't do it. God will provide. You pray and trust. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths 
He will. He will lead you to food and clean water and whatever else you might need. You just trust in Him with a gleeful trust, knowing it's but a short time, and then the multitude, too large to number, gets taken up. And that's at the sixth seal. Okay? So please remember that. And share it, share it, share it. When If you get left behind, if you're seeing this and you think you're ready and you're not, and you get left behind, you better be repenting, repenting, repenting right away. Because you don't know what's coming. Well, you can kind of know by reading chapter 6 in the book of Revelation. Those are the six seals that end with a great earthquake. Not everybody will survive it. But those that do, you know, first... I think it's 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, 16, 17 says, um, for that, let me pull that up. Let me pull that up. I think that's right. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. Thessalonians 4, let's go with 16. Okay, and let me go with NASB. I just prefer it. Okay. All right, that's it. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and with the trumpet of God. Okay, the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is when I believe is the second rapture. The dead in Christ will rise first. So I believe that people will die between the rapture and this, and the six seals, whether it's from famine or plague or whatever. They may be doing everything right except standing on Psalm 91. I don't know. I can't answer that. But for some reason, God allows them to die, but then they rise. All right, then, verse 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain, remain from what? From the six seals and from the first rapture? will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. People are going to need lots of comfort. So try to memorize these verses. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, 18. Now let me back up to 17, and I'm going to hit tools, and I'm going to show you what the word remain means. We who are alive and remain, unless they've changed it. All right. Paralapomi. It's real close to paralambano. Okay, it says, it translates G4035 in the following manner, remain, used two times, but outline a biblical usage, one, to leave over, they've been left over, two, to remain over, or to survive, we who are alive and have survived. Okay? I, I just see it so clearly. And if you're going to remain, we who are alive and remain or have survived, what are you left over from? You got left behind. And you're still alive because you have survived 
the seals. You see, because there's war, famine, economical collapse, possibly forced vaccination and shipping, but you've managed to escape. I don't know. I kind of think it's not enforced. You just won't be able to work or buy or sell. That I'm, I'm not sure of. I would just be prepared to refuse it and whatever happens, happens. And if you're in an area, like out in rural areas and they're not there yet rounding people up before the great earthquake, hopefully you survive the great earthquake. Okay? Remember how Psalm 91 is worded, though a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand. It will not come upon me, for I will only look on with my eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. So, that's why we're supposed to stand on Psalm 91. Gotta know it to stand on it and believe it. I can't get over how many people... Are Christians and they don't stand on Psalm 91 around here they wear their masks and it's really pretty sad you know and anyway I'll end it there I guess that's all I have to say about that I'm gonna plead the blood of Jesus over this video myself my computer my internet connection and over each and every one of you, you got to see something. And your devices and, oh, can you see it? Is he in there? He was asleep. I don't know if you saw him or not. I was trying to catch Jasper. He was sound asleep in this little square of bright sun that was on the floor. This dog never saw sunshine in that house. All the curtains closed like they were. It was so dark in there. It was pathetic. Anyway, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and all of your devices and your internet connections. And forever how long we get to keep connecting, let's do so. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later. And I hope it's up there. Because this first, I just believe this first rapture, Jesus doesn't come in the clouds. We just, he may be up there and we meet him up there, but the world isn't going to see him. Which I think is how they're going to get away with their saying aliens took us. But that's just my opinion. I don't know that. I know this, they have their plans, but God has his, and his are way better. So don't you worry about their plans, okay? They may have their plans, and some people are telling it on YouTube, you know, whistleblowers and such. And they, some people talk like there's no pre-trib rapture or early trib rapture, however you want to put it. And we're going to go through it all and just, they just don't believe exactly like us. It doesn't mean they're not good Christian people. They're just interpreting the word of God differently, which I do not understand. I don't. It's so clear to me, but you know, when the Lord opens your eyes to something, he he does. You just can't convince everybody of what, the way you believe, you know. And I could even be wrong on some things. But I like to say, this is what I believe. I don't know it for sure if I don't know it for sure. But there are some things I know for sure. Because the Lord told me and I found scriptures to back it up. Okay, that's enough for now. I've yapped long enough. So I'll talk to you later.
Bye for now.